Hello, fellow truth seekers. Welcome to the Brave New World Order podcast. I'm your host, Brandon St. One. Thank you for joining me today for my first episode in my deep dive series where I take a little deeper look into the events of the past and present, the occultists, all that weird shit. I do a little more research and I talk about it. So today, I'm going to go way back to the 16th century and take a look at two angel conjuring wizards and take a deep dive into their shenanigans. Mr. John D. and Mr. Edward Kelly. So first off, John D. is the most interesting of the duo. There's a lot more information about him out there. It goes deep and deep. The more you look into it, I'm going to just do a brief summary of each of them for this episode. And then hopefully do a little more. Because like I said, D. is amazing. There's so much shit with him. So today I just kind of want to get into the the part where they conjure, conjure, conjure angels. And they actually get an alphabet from the angel Raphael. And it's just fucking wild. It's cool. So I just wanted to kind of look into that for my first deep dive because it's fun. And interesting as shit. So I definitely want to talk about it. First off, John D. He was a mathematician, a very good mathematician, because he did lectures before he conjured angels. He was known in the royal family due to his father being a mercer, which was a person who traded in linens and silks. And so he was uh, he was in the court as well of Henry the Eighth. So right off the bat, John D. was known in the royal family. And he was connected. So he was a smart dude, grew up, went to college, went to one of the first colleges um, that Henry VIII had built and graduated as one of the first graduates of the college. And then afterwards he was doing lectures and he was traveling around. He was collecting books and he was into astronomy. So he had all these, these instruments and objects. And he must have come across some crazy shit like occult stuff. And that's when he really went down the rabbit hole. But at first he was more just into mathematics and was doing these lectures then he starts reading fortunes and he reads the fortune of of um the young king who was edward edward the sixth who was the king after henry the eighth that passed away after he died edward the sixth was like just a little boy and then he died at, at as a teen teenager and then Mary became the queen. That's when there was like all that turmoil, like Bloody Mary. She, that was her, and her turmoil between her and her sister, who was, who became Queen Elizabeth. But at the time, she was the princess, and she was, she was locked up by Mary, imprisoned at this time. And D tells the fortune of Mary, and she's like, "Yeah, whatever. I'm not impressed by all this this bullshit, occult shit. She just doesn't care." But he somehow reads the fortune of Princess Elizabeth while she's imprisoned. And he speaks of Mary's death. And that doesn't go well. And he gets imprisoned for placing a curse on the queen. And he's pretty much shunned while Mary's the queen. And he doesn't get very far. His ambitions have to wait. But luckily for him, his fortune does come true. And Mary dies. And that's when Elizabeth becomes the queen. And at this time, she's like, oh, shit, like, he predicted this. So she keeps D close. He's an advisor. He's a spiritual advisor, reads her fortune and horoscope. And also, he's a military advisor. And at this time, he promotes British British colonization in, in the term British Empire. And he pushes heavily for this. This is one of the reasons I find John D so fascinating is because of his close connection to Queen Elizabeth I and what played out in the future and how they did end up becoming a big empire and colonizing the world. So who knows? I mean, that probably would have happened anyway, but who knows? Maybe 
you know, certain people, certain influences shape the world behind the scenes. I believe that. So maybe this is one of the first instances. It's cool. I think it's pretty, pretty fucking cool. So he's advising her. And as well as he's, while he's out, he's, he's still doing lectures and he's traveling Europe. And at the same time, he's, he's getting close to certain high up individuals and he's sending, he's actually spying for Princess, Princess Elizabeth, no, Queen Elizabeth, sorry. He's spying for Queen Elizabeth and getting intel from these foreign countries while he's out there talking mathematics and all types of other shit and doing fortunes and stuff. He's gathering intel about their military and he's sending it back. And he's so into the occult at this time that the number seven is a huge number in the occult it's 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 like a known thing it's like god and all this stuff encompassed in the number seven so he's sending letters with a little marking of a zero zero seven and that's pretty much like the double oh seven james bond shit right there so i it's it's i think it's known that ian fleming based Based some of that shit off of John D. And there is, you can look up online, there's there's letters, there's actually in museums some of his stuff. And there's letters with his uh, 007 marking. That's a podcast in itself right there that I hope to dive a little more into exactly the stuff that he was, the, the intel that he was gathering. So that's pretty cool. But for now, we're just going to look at the John D. Edward Kelly angel conjuring shenanigans because John D. is so complex. And like I said, you just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. So at this time, he's just kind of like living the life because his connection to the royal family, I think they set him up with a place to live and all that shit. So he, he gets to just kind of do his research and, and, get, and, and collect all these books and do all this occult stuff that he was getting into so he's he's really getting deep and he's looking for a scryer to 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 talk to spirits and angels which a scryer is what edward kelly is and and that's what he was what he claimed to be and that's a person who looks into crystal balls and 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 chris and looking glasses and mirrors and and can supposedly speak to spirits and and beyond the veil i guess we'll say but it's not going very, very good for him, for D. He's looking for somebody who can help him. I, guess, I don't know why he can't do it himself. I guess he doesn't have the sight, right? So it seems like, I think there is some writings actually where he, he, does, he did say that he attempted or he did have some kind of results, but it didn't go well. So at this time, there's a man named Barnabas Saul. And I found some interesting, some interesting letters that were actually written by D about his accounts with with this man, and it's pretty cool. They actually contacted an angel in 1581 called the Nile, and um, this angel, the Nile, is pretty interesting. You can actually you can find it too. You can download it on the, inter- in the internet. Maybe I'll I'll post it in the show links if I if I have it somewhere. Um, it's in Latin and kind of hard to make sense of anyway, but it's just something to check out. It's really fucking cool, and that's yeah, it's cool. I mean, they they it actually has like some of the the weird back and forth kind of stuff of like questions they asked asked, and it's cool. So um, maybe I'll see if I can find it posted in the show notes. If not, I'm sure if you look up John D. in Barnabas Saul in this this angel. A N A E L, a Nile. I guess that's how you would say it. I don't want to say it too many times. I don't want it to show up behind me or something. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty interesting fucking thing going on there. So, at this time, I guess he has a falling out with this Barnabas Saul guy because Saul is, uh, I guess, more into the dark forces, which D is not into that. He's more into faith, he's a Catholic. He's a Christian, and he 
he his intentions is looking is an angelic. He's not looking for demons and he wants to find divine divine entities that like give knowledge. So he has this fallen out with Saul and this is when he comes in contact with Edward Kelly. And Edward Kelly was about twenty eight years younger than D and he was he was born in fifteen fifty five. And not much is known of him. It's hard to find information on Edward Kelly up until the encounter with D. That's the that's where the wealth of knowledge and information is, as well as there's some there's some books of after that were written by Kelly, but at before it's very it's very hard to find information on him. Just making sure I'm still recording. Okay, so where was I? So Edward Kelly was also known to go by the name of Edward Talbot. And he may have went to Oxford under that name. It's unclear, but there is a record from the 17th century uh, historian Anthony Wood that says Kelly was sent to a school in Oxford, but the exact house is unknown. There is a Talbot from Ireland that went to a specific place there that was probably him. But Wood said that Kelly left Oxford before completion due to an unsettled mind. So right off the bat there, that's an interesting look into Edward Kelly. There are some accounts of him being arrested and detained in Lancaster, England for forgery and counterfeiting and that his ears were cropped and that he was pilloried which is where they put you in the wood with your arms your hands and your arms dangling up there and your head's in the wood too and they just leave you there on public display to be humiliated and people walk by and laugh at you and shit and uh, cropping of ears was was a common punishment in Tudor era England and Kelly was always known to wear a cap on his head to cover his his ears supposedly I mean it, this is way back in the 1500s so it's it the information is very hard to come by but that's that seems to be the case there are some accounts that say he worked as an apothecary's apprentice and some say that he also worked as a notary in England in London England that's about as much as, like, without going too too deep. There's not a lot of. There's not a lot like with John D. It's hard to even just. It's hard to know when to stop, because there's so much and so much interesting stuff with him. But. That's Edward Kelly's intro. He um. He comes in contact with D when D was looking for a scryer. And he approached. He approached D. Kelly approached D first. And it's not known by much, but there is a, a a diary entry that was and that by D that was from his later life that speculated. D actually speculated that Kelly was a plant, but somebody like by his enemies they planted, they wanted, they put him there to get like information. So right like there like. It gets crazy between these guys. There's a lot of weird paranoia and shit going on as they their their journey goes on for like five or six six years. But at first, he was definitely impressed with Edward Kelly, and so much so that he buddied up with him between 1582 and 1589. That's seven years that he teamed up with him, and they performed scrying sessions. And that's where Edward Kelly would receive messages from crystal balls and fucking mirrors and they would do a whole ritual probably with candles and certain fucking sigils and shit who knows what they were really doing but there's a lot of diaries out there and it's it goes very deep but i just kind of want to do a, like a surface level intro to all this shit because it's fun and uh so they would do these sessions for about seven years and kelly would would get the messages from from looking into the mirror or crystal, and D would record them and write them down. And in these messages, 
these angels told them about the true origins of mankind and they gave them the original language that they claimed was the language Adam used to speak with God. And it was lost after, after the fall. But also this language was recovered by Enoch the, in the Bible, which is the book of Enoch is which wicked interesting. And I want to do a deep dive into that as well. But this, that's, that whole thing plays into this, but because this language is supposedly called Enochian language. They don't call it that, but it has been referred to that since. So they get this crazy, complex mathematical system for contacting these angels. And they continue to do so. And they they get they, these, these like dozens of, of entities and different rituals and different different ways to summon these these entities and these angels and different uh, magic systems, different, just lots of crazy shit that they got from these, these angels. And these angels were speaking of like crazy, of crazy stuff of like, of the apocalypse and the end of, end of mankind and shit like that. And Dee and Kelly were, were more interested in, in like, in hidden treasures which is, is is wicked funny, like the the angels are fucking are like revealing like shit that like all of us would want to know. They give us the knowledge of of everything, and then they're like, "Yo, but where's the treasure?" Yo, that's <laughs> it's just awesome. And um, so they get magic squares too. Like there's these there's so much. You can go look at these journals and these books and stuff if you can find them. And like I said, I'll try to find some stuff and post them. I'm going to try to build a website and try to put everything that I talk about on there as I go along, kind of companion. But right now, I'm just I'm, I'm just doing the podcast. And my hopes are to build it a little bit up as I go. But for now, if I can post some stuff in the show notes, I will. But I definitely, anything I talk about, anything anybody talks about, I definitely recommend looking for yourself. I think that's the best. So they get magic squares, which are like like a square where the uh, the numbers in each row add up to the same value, up and down, across, diagonal, all the, all the way around. There's also ones with words, like the Seder square, which is the basis of the movie Tenant. Which it doesn't really tell you that. That's another deep dive I want to do. That shit's interesting too. Um, the Seder Square. Look that up too. Found in Pompeii. I know I'm going off topic a little bit. But this stuff's all connected. Magic. Cult. John D. 1500s. Shit goes way back. Even farther than that obviously. So. It's all connected. Look up the Seder Square. Look up a Magic Square. Look up what that is. Look up their connection in the occult. Because... The journals and the books that the and Kelly wrote are in the form of these squares. So that shit's pretty interesting. So if you know what they are, look them up. They're pretty cool. And they're in a lot of the occult writings of the past. So they're getting this information from the Archangel Raphael. This is what they claim. Archangel Raphael in 1583 begins communing with, communicating with them during one of the sermons with Raphael. Kelly notes a book in the vision, in the mirror, whatever he's using to communicate with Raphael. He in there's a book at the feet of him, and it contains all the secrets of fucking mankind from the beginning to the end and everything in between. And that's the beginning of the the language that they start writing down and recording. That they say God speaks to Adam in the Garden of Eden, right at the beginning of everything. So that's fucking cool. Very, very cool. So in the middle of all this, they're getting all this cool information and this like about the beginning of time, the end of time, knowledge about man, and all these fools keep fucking wonder worrying about it. They're like, yo, where's the treasure? They're like, where's the treasure, angel? And the angels are getting kind of like pissed off. They're getting pissed. They're like, yo, 
like we're telling you like some important shit and like you just want like treasures, right? So and at one time they supposedly even ask the angels to borrow money to buy a horse. Like this that's fucking nuts, right? To buy a horse, they ask the angels, right? These angels are like, yo, this is everything. These this is all the knowledge that you could ever need and ever want. And they're like, yo, where's the treasure and we need a horse. It's pretty fucking awesome. Such a cool story. So in the middle of all this, they're just this that's the most interesting part is that they communicate with with Raphael and then they get this this language. And I want to dive more into that as well too, because that's that's pretty complicated and very hard to just kind of get into in this podcast. I just wanted to cover the angel conjuring madness, which is pretty awesome. So they they they're conjuring Raphael and angels, and in the middle of all of this, they're like, they Kelly starts saying that that these angels actually want them. Because they're married, both of them married to the women. They're not married to each other. They're married to separate women, and they're women too. There's there's a whole pretty pretty cool story about them too, and the shit that these these women put up with, and it's it's pretty cool. That's another once again layers upon layers. It's just like I didn't even know where to like how to even stop when I was just kind of looking to all this because it was just chaos, and I just said, okay, I'm just gonna. Cut it off right here and just focus on the angel conjuring fucking madness of this whole situation because there's just so much and that's it's almost with everything too. It's like even what's going on now in current events that it's like if you if you're like us or I think you're like me if you're listening to this that if you're seeking the truth you just you talk to people who who just follow the narrative and you have to just constantly just be like. You know, you have to start with all these other prerequisites before you can understand like what's going on now, and it's just tiring. So that's with all this stuff. So that's why I just decided. Let's look at John D. Edward Kelly. When the conjured angels talk to Raphael, they got an alphabet that's called a Nokian alphabet. That's pretty cool, and you can look at that online and look what it looks like. And supposedly, I'll dive deeper into it and stuff like that. But supposedly, it's like it's a pretty legit language. Like it has all like the, the requirements for a language that I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in, I don't know. I'm not a linguist and all that shit, but I guess like people have looked at it and that are, and they, they say that it has all like the things like it has whatever all the points are that you need for like a legit language or the, like a proto language. It has, has all that. So that's, it's pretty interesting. But the most interesting part of this is, is the fact that Kelly is the guy who gets all the recordings from the angels. And then he's he's giving it to D, who's like, okay, I'll just take this guy's word for it and I'll write this shit down. And then we'll just go with that, right? Because eventually, you know, things do go south between these two guys because Kelly, I mean, right off the bat, Kelly seems shady. So Kelly says to D and there are journals I found these and I found I found the journals from D when he questions this and then when he comes to the conclusion to kind of go along with it and then regretting it afterwards that I have that I'll, I'll see if I can post that to the show notes if not to the website when I get that up and running but yeah so Kelly I wonder if you can guess where this is going but anyway Kelly Tells D that the angels want them to sleep with each other's wives. That's what Kelly says he's getting from the angels. He's he's getting that this will be the thing that will will you can read the letters and why the reasoning is and it's it's something along the lines of doing something that's like so not pure will like sort of litify them in the eyes of god and the angels and so it's something crazy like that so he is like what the fuck dude like i don't fuck it, i ain't going with that and he tells his wife and his wife's like no and shit at first you know and obviously but there's a whole history too of the wives of uh of kelly and dean the shit that they put up with and they were pretty cool and they were pretty badass at the same time. Like 
such a fucking cool more to the story. Like I said, layers and layers and layers. And um, so their wives are like, fuck no, we ain't doing this shit. But then upon further, like, further sessions and further, it seems like, manipulation by Kelly, D goes along with it. And you can kind of guess what this leads to. It leads to the end of their friendship. They they do it and st- they go along with it, but it doesn't. And you can read the dot. Like I'll try to find. I like to do like I said, m- deep, deeper, deeper dives on all this stuff. But for now, to spare doing uh over the top six hour podcast on every single topic, I'll have to just kind of start with something, and then later on we'll get more into it. This is my first deep dive episode, after all. So. We're just going to roll with it for now. And so these guys were just fucking just conjuring angels, just getting getting silly knowledge. But at the same time, they decided to ask for treasure and hidden buried treasures on the world in the world. Because at, these guys were wheeling and dealing. It seems like it seems like the kind of was maybe at first, like, his intentions were good, but then he met Kelly, who was a con man, and then they, I think Kelly used Dee's influence to try to, to to get in with other people. Like, there's an account of them going to, like, to Poland and, and other places in Europe and with the Habsburgs, and they're, they're wheeling and dealing with those people and shit. So it seems like I, maybe it, it, Kelly got a little... Kelly got him. <laughs> it seems like maybe Kelly got him a little. Seems like he maybe conned con D a little bit. And from some of the writings in the diaries, it definitely seems like D started to say, wait a minute, maybe, maybe this guy is a fucking asshole like everybody's been warning me. But it didn't end well. It didn't end well at all. Especially for Kelly, because he later on got imprisoned. And then he tried to make a prison break. And while he almost made it, Scott Free, he fell from the prison down on the ground, broke his bones, and then died later, like hours later. So he, like, it was set up to, like, somebody tried to help him, got a horse, got it there. All he had to do was get down. And he didn't. He fell. So these guys both like just kind of faded into obscurity later in their lives. This guy fell to his doom and from a prison. Earless fucking con man. But they did write like a collection of all this, their, their encounters. D, same thing kind of happened with D. Not that he fell from a prison, but he ended up kind of dying in obscurity. But... There are museums and that and like there later there was a, a rekindling of of him and his knowledge and his connection to the Queen Elizabeth the First. So it's all pretty interesting. And D definitely was like OG as far as like uncovering occult stuff. That's why I'm so fascinated in him. He was he wrote a bunch of books, the Monus Hieroglyphicus, and he was it was based on like a symbol of the earth. So I'm, you've seen this symbol before. Once again, I'll see if I can. I'm going to get this website going so I could kind of have some companion to what I'm talking about and some visual. I'll have that going maybe soon. We'll see how it goes. But D, D has a lot of works out there and a lot of different stuff for everybody to check out. And I recommend it all. I'm going to do more on him in next episodes i'll probably do a part two deep dive of d and kelly maybe you know do an individual one of like a lot of the stuff that they got into individually after they met maybe try to find some more shit on kelly before but for now that's some some angel conjuring wife swapping prison break bullshit right there right that's some cool shit 1500s goes way back the stuff that d was into was inspired he inspired many of the people we know, like Crowley and Blavatsky and other people that I'll be doing deep dives on. So I thought I'd start way back then. But there are people even further back that, that D found, you know, when he found his books and stuff. So there's so much to look into. I plan on doing many, many, many more. 
of these episodes. This is my first one. I'll hopefully get better at them. But for now, that's episode one of the Brave New World Order podcast deep dive series. John D. and Edward Kelly, the two 16th century angel conjuring wizard alchemist occultist madmen i hope you enjoyed a little bit of this i hope it inspired you to look into it further which i encourage everybody to do about everything because that's what it's all about is knowledge is power right so once again i'm your host brandon saint one if anybody would like to contact me my email is the Brave New World Order podcast at gmail.com. Thanks again, everybody. Think for yourself, stay positive, and question everything.